Welcome back to Python Programming, an introduction into filing, part one. So what is a file? Well, a file can be many different things. It could be a text file. It could be a graphics file. It could be a audio file or a web page or even a Python program. Ultimately, all these files are just stored as a series of 0-1s binary, as you can see. However, what happens? How does the computer know what to do with that binary? Well, it's all down to the computer program because it takes the binary, processes it, depending what it needs to do. So, for example, if we had a text we wanted to process, we would have a notepad file uh, like the following where each line of text is stored as a series of characters and each character is stored as an ASCII value or a number. Now you're going to ask the question, what is ASCII? Well, ASCII is an internationally agreed standard of numbers and letters where you have a number is given or coded against a character. So for example, the number 65 or 0,10,0,0,1 is the let capital letter A. And conversely, you might have the space character, which is the number 32, which is stored in binary as 0,0,1,0,0,0,0,0. So all those characters are stored as just simply numbers or binary in a file. And you can see here where each letter is stored in ASCII and in binary. And we go through each one until we get to the end and we get a special character called the, car the carriage return, the number 13, which means take me to the next line. And then we do the same again, carriage return at the end, go back to the end until we hit the end of the file. So the next part is how do we now code this in Python? So we now take this sample file, text file, and we have the following Python code. So starting on line one, we create an object called file. We then using the open command, open the file as specified in the quotation marks, the name of the file. You then assign that to the object you've just created called file. Please note that the name of the file that file must exist in the same directory as your program, otherwise the program will give you an error saying file not found. The next line of code uses the file object again to using the method dot read, which basically reads the file and then prints it to the screen using the print command. And finally, in the last line of code, we take again the object name file and using the method dot close to close the file. This is really important that you do this because if you don't, it may cause errors and bugs later down the line in your program. So here we have the program running with opening the file, printing the file and closing. So when we run it, you'll see here that the contents of the text file is displayed below. So what about writing to a text file? Well, we can write to a text file in much the same way. So we create a file object called file and we use the command open to open the file or create the file. Now notice we use the comma W option, which means write the file as opposed to the default, which is read. There are many others that we can use as those options as shown here. So we can have the R for the read option, the A for the append, the W for the write, which we are doing here, and the X for create, give me an error if you can't create. We then go on to create a string called content and we have the following lines of text there. Notice we are using three quotes because we're going over multiple lines of code that allows us to go multiple lines for the same string. Then we go on to line five, which again using the object called file and the method dot write to the write the string content to the file. And then finally in line six, we close the file using the close method. Again, it's very important that you do this. Now, this is a great way of creating a simple text file using a string. 
and we can see this working by looking at where our program is stored. You can see there file.open.py, that's my program. And now I have created this file to .txt and I can open it in Notepad and you will see straight away the code, the text that I've got in the file there. So what about other methods of reading from a text file? I mean, so far we've just read an entire text file and assigned it to a string, but there are other ways in which we might want to process the contents of a text file. So one such method is the following. So we have a list of players of, a, say, a game, and each person's name is stored as one line in the text file. So how we could open the file as shown in line one, and then we can simply use the file object read line dot method to read one line of text from the text file. And in this instance, we read line John and we assign John to the string line, as you can see. We then take the string and then print it to the screen, which would simply print the name John to the screen, as you can see. And then we would close the file as per normal. However, what about the other list of names that we have? We've only done the first line. How else could we do that? So rather than just reading one line at a time, what about reading another line? So we could open the file as per normal at the top there. And then we could, in line two, read the first line, which in this case would be John, read the second line, which we assign to another variable called line one, and we do the same for line two, and then simply print line, line one, line two, out at the end. Um, whilst this is a good method, it's, it doesn't really deal with multiple names in a list, or we don't know how long the list is, and also we'd have lots and lots of variables for every single line that we read, which could get quite confusing. So how else could we do it? Well, let's take this program, for example, where at line one, we create a list called players, which we set up as an empty list to begin with. We then open the file, and then we use the following line three to loop through each line of the text file. So we take the first line and we append it to the list, in this case, John. We loop back around and we then append Asher. And then we again loop back around and append Lenny. And then we finish off the loop until we get to the end of the text file for the rest of the names, appending each one to the list. We then simply print the contents of the list to the screen in this following program. However, you'll notice something particularly strange about this out printed output, is that you'll notice the funny characters on the end of each person's name. And these are special characters, and why is it happening? Well, because if you remember earlier, I told you that we have this special invisible character called the carriage return. So if we take the list that we had earlier, at the end of each line, there was a special character called the carriage return, which tells the text that you're going to the next line. It's carriage return, so we're going to the next line. However, Python has to encode this somewhere, and it does this by putting the backslash n as a way of saying this is an invisible character, which is a carriage return. However, in our program, we don't need this. So what we need to do is remove it. And we make a simple amendment to the code in line four, where we say, just take away the last two characters. So next time we append it, it's that you will just get the name. So by running the following program, the list will now be changed from what we had earlier to something that looks like this, where we have now removed the last two characters. So what about writing a line to a text file? It's very similar to what we've just done, except in reverse. So if we take this program, we start off with line one, where we create a list of predefined names, which you have there. And then for the second bit, we open the text file as normal, but this time we make sure that we put the W at the end to say that it is creating or writing the file. Then we go on to the for loop, which will take each element in the list and assign it to the variable player. And then we write the contents of the player string 
to the file, this time adding the carriage return using the code backslash N to the file. So as then we forces us onto the next line as we go through the loop. Now you can see that here in the code when we run it. So we have the file here. I will run the file with the predefined list at the top and then that will recreate the file. So if we look at the file, we can see that it has put all the names in correctly with the carriage returns. If I add another name to the end of the list, so Graham, for example, and I rerun the program, it will recreate the file with the addition of Graham at the end of it, as you can see here. So in summary of what we've learned, so we've learned what is a file and the nature of a file with particular focus on text files, looking at things like ASCII and the carriage return. We also looked at reading and writing uh, content to a file and then looking at how we processed the contents of text files using lists. Now in the next videos, we will focus on more complicated ways of processing and reading and writing to files, including CSVs and SQL databases.